In this video, we want to talk about our positive PV anomalies and the airflow relative to them. So in this figure, which comes from Mid-Latitude Atmospheric Dynamics by Jonathan Martin, we want to consider what happens to the atmosphere if we impose a positive PV anomaly, which is illustrated here in figure 9.6b, within this barotropic atmosphere, which is given in A. We know that if this were the case, our PV anomaly would induce changes to the isentropic structure of our atmosphere, such that we know underneath our positive PV anomaly aloft, we would have our cold dome of air below, coincident with the idea of our cold core cyclones, coupled with our warm pockets of air on either side. Additionally, we're trying to think about how is the air going to flow relative to this cyclone. And so one of the things we can consider is the fact that this PV anomaly is likely going to be moving to the east. And so if we are a typical east-west cross-section here, then we know our isentropes are going to deform relative to this positive upper-level PV anomaly such that we would have rising motion along the eastward side of our positive PV anomaly or our upper level trough and downward motion on the backside. This should not be surprising to us because this is essentially what we get from when we look at a QG perspective or an isentropic perspective relative to a moving cyclone. We can just con confirm here that this is in fact the case, and that these two different lenses, QG versus isentropic slash PV, don't give us different answers, but in fact just allow us a different lens to view any particular atmospheric situation, which may highlight unique elements uh, depending on the exact circumstances within the atmosphere. Thanks for watching. In another video, we're going to talk about how do upper level positive PV anomalies relate to lower level positive theta anomalies in the life cycle of our mid latitude cyclones.